International soccer seems to be suffering from a mysterious heart disease as Barcelona star Sergio Aguero tearfully retires from soccer due to a heart condition after he collapsed on field during a match. Now, I'm going to pronounce a lot of these names incorrectly because I'm not too in tune with international soccer, but I do find it troubling when you have somebody like Aguero, who's 33 years old, retiring early and combine that with the idea that you have, I believe this is Italy's league, uh, Napoli midfielder Piotr Zielinski at 27 struggling to breathe during a match. You're having the English league's uh, Manchester United Victor Lindelof, who now has, has to have a heart monitor after he had heart conditions on the field or breathing conditions on the field. And also the French league one's football player Martin Terrier uh, having breathing problems and collapsing on the field as well this is becoming a bigger issue but i don't want this to be a thing of it's just confirmation bias you already kind of believe this thing so obviously we're going to blame more of it so to cover this story i'm going to be very careful so first and foremost i'm not going to show any of the videos of any of these things happening because it's very weird that I'll bookmark these things on twitter i'll save videos i'll save posts and they all mysteriously get deleted online so yeah, I could see that the league's being upset due to copyright issues, but it's almost like I can see lots of highlights and replays of other sports, and I don't really see this type of reaction from the leagues as I am with this top topic. But then, I guess also, I want to cover something like international soccer where, yeah, maybe this is just average for the league where people are always always having heart conditions like this and we just don't know about it because most Americans like myself don't really pay attention to international soccer we don't really watch the other matches or even watch FIFA even though we have a team local to us in whatever city we're in it's just something that now that we're all zoomed into heart conditions and myocarditis anything we see about it is just going to be confirmation bias which I don't want that to happen on either side of the political spectrum you're on and also I want to look at other sports where I know that football or American football and soccer, they're going to be very different because football is a lot of sprinting and pushing and then stopping and resting, sprinting and pushing and stopping and resting. But if you compare something like soccer, basketball, uh, cycling, those are going to be more constant cardiovascular activities. So I want to see is are things like the NBA, are they having similar issues with heart conditions? Because that would either break or, or um, prove or disprove that narrative. And I wanted to look into that and also finally just look at the discussions about it because this is what i really see with the problem with what's happening in society right now where either it's going to be governments or big tech or whatever it may be they really want to shut down any conversation or dialogue you're having that could harm the narrative even if the discussion would lead people to believe in the narrative they would actually say okay i was thinking this thing but actually after really looking at it from all different facets and just seeing where the balls fall they realize that, oh, there was nothing to worry about. But when you go to something like r slash soccer, where I saw this post a month ago, and now it's been deleted, where they're just trying to have a discussion about it, I think it's having the Streisand effect, where the more the big tech companies or uh, the mandates want to shut down dialogue that may be against their narrative or may just ca cause people to question things, the more they get people to think in those narratives or in those, you know, tinfoil hat theories. Because I guess first and first and foremost, I want to talk about it is just false stories is blatant things that aren't true because once the internet gets a hold of them they show a couple slideshows on their twitter or on their instagram they just believe it even though it's a big nothing burger because you saw back in september 1st where the dallas zoo had planned to vaccinate the animals against covid19 and just about a month after that you had the dallas zoo facing criticism over the giraffe death transparency where three giraffes died a month after they did they said they were going to vaccinate animals against covid19 but if you waited just a bit and you didn't say hey look we have proof it's bad it's this, it's this negative thing that we all need to not trust if you looked at newsweek later on on uh just a, a few days after the whole giraffe transparency death was a major issue if you actually read into the article they talked about how the dallas zoo, zoo euthanized a three-month calf because they, they were injured by, while running you had a 19 year old giraffe that had um liver failure and you had a 14 year old giraffe that had uh, signs of illness but also uh, abnormal liver enzymes and the zoo actually said it planned to vaccinate big cats and apes giraffes do not fall into either one of those categories so you mean to say that you had i don't want to say natural causes because the uh the younger one just had to be uh euthanized because it was it got injured but it's like you have three giraffes dying due to nothing related to vaccination but i kept on seeing the dallas fort worth uh, zoos or the i'm sorry the dallas zoos uh narrative going around there saying oh the giraffes all died the giraffes all died died people having signs about it. and it's like well you're only getting half the story and i don't want anybody to get caught up in something that's just blatantly false because it harms your argument and it's one of those things of just because we're not on the very very left wing side of the narrative doesn't mean that we need to bury ourselves in the other side just to contrast that side we actually just want to be the silent majority that just believes in truth no matter where it falls because 
that's what we want, right? That's what everybody can get behind the truth. It's hard to get somebody behind a decoy narrative because obviously at some point in time, they're going to get red pilled to the truth and then realize, hey, does this party have nothing but just falsehoods? But reading on, you have something like Sergio Aguero uh, tearfully talking about how he's got to retire at 33. And I did find earlier that he actually had heart, heart issues earlier in his career. And that was something that was always there. So maybe this was just something that was bound to happen. But right now, people are starting to slam dunk on him because he was encouraging people in his uh, the campaign to get the jabs where he had a video saying, do it for yourself for responsibility and solidarity for uh, for yours, for everyone, everyone 12, 12 years of age or older. So it's like everybody's trying to slam dunk on this guy saying, oh, this is what happens when you try to push this thing. And it's like, I think that's nonsense. I think that if I was a person that was always promoting like two way rights or something, and I was always talking about it and saying, hey, it's a it's a good thing. And later on, I unfortunately meet my demise in some sort of a two way type event or like a robbery or something. I know the people that are against those rights are going to go online and say, oh, that's what he gets. That's what he gets because he was always, you know, pushing that thing. And I think that it's like, no, that's nonsense. That doesn't help us push the narrative. That doesn't help us talk about stuff. It's just, you know, mudslinging for the sake of mudslinging because you don't like the people from that side. And I think that's what generates more tribalism. So regardless of what he's done in his in the past right now, I just want to make this a thing of let's just get to the truth of it. Let's get to see what's really happening because you're seeing Agrero uh, suffering from it. The uh, Piotr Zelensky suffering from it. Uh, Victor Lindelof suffering from it. Uh, Martin Terrier. Uh, you also had an ex Parma footballer, Giuseppe Perino, passing away at 29. You're having um, Fabrice. I, I can't pronounce these names. I'm sorry. He collapses as well. You had a guy named Luis Ojeda, age 20, passing away. Uh, Emil pa Paulson collapsing due to, due to cardiac arrest in Norway. And then you have this. Uh, article from the sun where you had keepers from both teams collapsing during a game which is terrifying and then also i found this article from punchng.com which i don't know what the website this is but it was sergio aguero but also 16 other popular footballers and they talked about other people that i didn't even know about and i couldn't find other than this article where they say what is this uh christian erickson nawanku kanu uh miguel de la cuevas miguel uh angel garcia tabar and it's like i can keep on listing these people off but this is pretty alarming of all these people at the same time during the same year having these issues and i really wanted to look into just you know wikipedia might not be the best resource but really looking at the history of it because most of us don't take pay attention to international soccer so looking at all the years and this is just deaths overall so i wanted to just have count people that were fatal heart attack collapsed or cardiac arrest or something that's related to what we're talking about right now because as i looked through this there's even a death attributed to struck by lightning and i wasn't going to compare 2018 struck by lightning guy to somebody that suffered a cardiac arrest in 2021 those things are equivalent so when you're counting 2021 deaths due to heart attacks collapsing uh, cardiac arrest you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so you had 14 in 2021 not including december right now so 14 sounds like an alarming number when you compare it to 2020s three now we know that in 2020 most of the world was shut down so you really can't count that year but compare it to the 14 in 2021 to 2019s one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so you had 10 to 14 which isn't that much of an outlier. So you look over to 2018 where you see uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 to 10 to 14, and you're trending up and you're wondering maybe there's just more people playing soccer. So I would say even though it sounds like a big scary number and you're seeing those 16 people collapse, maybe we're just not aware of it because... 10 to 14 doesn't seem to be that big of a jump. And if 2022 goes down, who knows at this point in time, you don't want to jump the gun. Maybe it's not that big of a deal because it's just the nature of a high cardiovascular intensive sport where these things happen and it's very unfortunate. So I want to compare it to something like basketball, where as you know, I pop, as you know, if you watch my channel a lot, I watch a lot of NBA basketball. I had jerseys. I was a big Celtics fan. So I knew a bit about what was going on because you have somebody like Brandon Goodwin of the Atlantic Hawks that he no longer plays right now. And he does a bit of a video game online streaming. I believe he's on Twitch. He just outright blames the medication for the reason as to why he lose, lost a season because it was mandated by the, uh, the league. And it was the idea that he blames it. But then if you have one last year and then in that year as well you had lamarcus aldridge or he might have been the year before so one in for uh, last year the year before that you had lamarcus aldridge having a a regular heartbeat and then back in was this 2016 chris bosh having blood clots and he was sidelined he came back a little bit later but then he was pretty much his hall of fame career was over uh you have 
This is from 2015, a year before that. Uh, Mirza Telokotovic from the Brooklyn Nets. He also had an issue with blood clots. And then you also had from, uh, this is 20. 20- 12 you have uh jeff green he was from the he went to the boston celtics later on but he was someone that also had heart issues and this was i think it was wolf parkinson's disease i can't i can't find the 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 name of the disease right now but it seemed that it was kind of averaging from what i could gather one to possibly two of those heart related diseases in something like basketball where their careers were sidelined so if it's happening consistent with with seasons prior, you don't really see as this as an uptick. But I mean, if you're really hyper focused on it, if you see any of them that confirm your bias, I think that's a dangerous thing to just keep get into that mode of everything confirms what you were thinking, and you don't want to see anything beyond what you believe in. And also thinking of something like cycling, where it's also a very high cardio intensive activity. Well, you had one person retiring due to a cardiac anomaly this year, but again, I wasn't digging too much into it. But then if you think of something like hockey, where I wouldn't agree that it's the same thing because so much of hockey is just different lines. It's a very, very intensive. Then you sit for a long period of time. And also something about the cold ice and the, the, the arenas may have something to do with it. But you think about something where they have a from Russia today talking about a 24 year old goalkeeper passing away after a collapse on ice. You're having a, the Oilers a goalie Alex Stalock has to miss the entire season due to a heart condition. But Again, is this consistent with what was happening before? Because I found this article from Sports Illustrated from, what is this, 2014, talking about how yeah, blood clots are a major issue in hockey, so it may have been there all the time. We just didn't talk about it. And also the idea that I found from The Guardian three years ago where they talk about more young footballers were dying of heart problem, problems and thought where maybe this was a thing that was always there, but because we didn't care about soccer or we were, we were just able to freely speak about something it wasn't ever becoming a major issue because if I go to some place like r slash soccer where they talk about how there's a public puzzling heart disease in soccer, an unusually large number of professional and amateur soccer players have collapsed recently. But I remember this post and there's 145 comments and there was a lot of stuff that I was looking at and just seeing both sides of the discussion because, as you know, reddit.com and all the subreddits are very left leaning. Even the conservative subreddits seem to be a bit left leaning as well. Maybe that's just because of uh, people jumping in those in those subreddits. But the idea that you're not even allowed to talk about it right now. Like they deleted this post and you're not even allowed to be over there. And even the, the, the cross posts of this article are shut down as well. And I really see that as a Streisand effect the more they try to cover it up, the more they're going to get people to be passionately, passionately believing in that thing. And I think that's detrimental to them preserving their quote decoy narrative because all it does is just make people go further down the tinfoil hat path. Because when you read this article over here and it had to be translated from a uh, Dutch to English where you have, the puzzling diseases in football, they talk about how in Berlin, Sergio Aguero, he will be out for at least three months. Um, then you had uh, Erickson also passing out. And then you have all these people on this giant list of a uh, a cardiac arrest of a referee. A younger soccer player had to be reanimated during a game. Um, somebody else had to be reanimated during a cardiac arrest. Another person collapsing heart problems. And you look at this large article over here and it's just a thing of... Yeah, maybe this is signs of a horrendous future to come right now due to mandates or due to what's going on right now. But you can't say that it's definitely that, especially if we can't even talk about it with this open discussion. Like, I'm somewhat hesitant to have this discussion right now because I know about the rules. But I think that if I come at it with just rationale and discussion and not trying to blame anything in particular, we can have this discussion because it's very hard to have it because... There's so much censorship online that it's pretty, it's sad because I think that it's just going to make the issue worse because right now, if you look at just Google trends of what people are searching, you're seeing something like myocarditis is just blown up recently where everybody's talking about it right now. And yet when you go to social media, Facebook or uh, Reddit or Twitter or something, it always seems to be suppressed. And especially on YouTube, people don't let you talk about it because it's becoming this, this dangerous topic of people saying, well... Well, you can't make someone hesitant to go undergo a medical procedure that's safe, free, and effective, so just shut that conversation down. But I would like to say that maybe it is that thing. We don't know right now, and maybe you know later on, after 75 years, and they finally release the data with the FDA, we'll find out. But maybe it's also just catching COVID, because we do know with the, I believe it was a Red Cross release data saying... A lot more people have caught and recovered from COVID than previously known because a lot of people are just asymptomatic. So I think they said something along the lines of 80% of the people that have given blood had either antibodies from having it before or have, have been vaccinated already. So that means to say that we should have reached or met that uh, we should have reached that uh, herd immunity threshold. But apparently that just keeps on moving. The goalpost keeps moving. But if I look at somebody like Jason Tatum from the Boston Celtics talking about how his breathing has changed since he had, he caught COVID and it's, it's saying that back in, uh, 
January, and this article was written as of May, he was still feeling the effects of it, saying that he had to use an inhaler before games to open up his lungs so he can breathe. He said that there's a difference in how my breathing is before he had the virus to now. He just feels different. He breathes a little different before he had the virus. And I was watching Tim Pool today, and he even talked about how he feels like he's still at 95% of his pr previous capabilities, and it's something where... A lot of people are blaming a certain medical procedure for the reason of this happening. Why Aguero and all these other athletes are suffering from this thing right now and they're collapsing everywhere because it's this mandated uh, thing you need. But also, could it be that you have a lot of these people that are very, very into cardiovascular activity and it's very, very high in demand and there's a lot more soccer player. There's a lot more professional soccer players than there are professional basketball players just due to the sport and how popular it is around the world and the idea that Maybe this is just, you know, that 0.3% of people that are going to that are going to have these effects from it because maybe they had it and they didn't even realize they had the disease. Or maybe this is something that later on we're going to figure out that, you know, maybe Moderna has some sort of side effect that we didn't know about. And it's one of those things that we can't use these things as a as confirmation bias for what we already believe. We need to look at these things objectively and to see where the ball falls, where it's just a thing of. Well, let's let's look at it. Let's actually try to research it and f figure out what it is, because I think there's too much of people trying to be tribal where it's like, I don't agree with you. So anything that helps me not agree with you, I'm going to wave that flag everywhere. And I see that with the whole Dallas Zoo fiasco where it's just not true. But here we are. So if you appreciate my content, because I really try to be a moderate, unbiased person, make sure you subscribe down below, because I believe that there's not too many people that agree, that do that online. And even if you don't agree with me on this topic right now, I think it's important to have that discussion where you don't agree with me and you tell me why you don't agree with me, or you tell me why you think that, you know, something else could be, so I'm missing something about this. Like, I don't really know much about international soccer, so enlighten me. I'm not going to be that person that gets super offended about anything that, that doesn't agree with me, so I have to shut them down or like, you know, criticize them online because I I think that I've seen enough of the echo chambers. I've seen enough of the the radicalization of people online. And I just think that there needs to be a place like this, a decoy voice, where we can have that discussion. So if you appreciate that content, make sure you like the video, share the video, give me a thumbs up, or um, just give me a comment to that decoy duck emoji. It really helps me out. But as always, thanks for dropping by and hope to see you in the next video.